When a boy opens his eyes, he finds several adorable maids who are happy to see him. His natural instinct is to throw a fireball and burn them all alive, but he notices that his hands are small right before he does so. His aim is momentarily clouded by the brief diversion, causing him to miss the maid and instead blow a hole through the castle walls. Luckily, his blast did not trigger a terror. Alert throughout the kingdom, because of the ongoing fireworks display. While everyone is rejoicing over the arrival of the new Prince Lloyd, the maids inside, the palace are starting to think about changing occupations in order to avoid being burned to ash by this trigger happy child. After a while, it becomes clear that the maids choose to remain employed, but only after upgrading their life insurance. They are now searching for the prince and are unable to locate him anywhere. But shortly after they depart, Prince Lloyd appears from behind a pillar. He tries to leave as quickly as possible to avoid being discovered, but on his way out, he runs into some officials. They agree when he asks them not to tell the maids that he is here. But one of them asks Lloyd if he wants to go hunting with them to kill time. He declines the offer because, regrettably, he is now quite busy and goes off to do his own thing. The other guy questions the official, who is too young to run for the crown, why he is even trying to make friends with the kids, leaving him discouraged that Lloyd has rejected him once more. Furthermore, it won't be beneficial politically to win his friendship. Because he is only the seventh prince, the first official has one response to this. He needs another excuse, in my opinion, to continue being friendly with the child who has the capacity to blow up a castle. On the day of his birth, though it's only conjecture, it wouldn't be out of the question to suggest that. Lloyd is the father of sorcery reincarnated. Returning to Lloyd, he was merely an ordinary sorcerer in a previous life. But he is in fact a reincarnation. He does not know why he is reborn as a prince here why he remembers his previous life, or whose bright idea was for him to wear this outfit. But he does know that he will live his life, exactly as he did in his previous life and spend it all researching all kinds of wonderful magic. He is enthralled with the vast library collection of the castle and believes it to be even better than the one he had access to in his previous life. But before he can even begin reading a book, a maid snatches it away from him. Silpha has finally found him so he can no longer skip the remaining lessons whenever he pleases. Lloyd is currently practicing his sword skills outside with Silpha, and the eight-year-old is treating him ruthlessly, but he is refusing to back down. Silpha retorts that there is more to life than merely attempting to obtain power in the family, to which Lloyd objects, saying he is too far down the line to ever have a chance at the royal throne. Being a part of the royal family, it is only fitting that he receive an education covering a wide range of topics. Since she was given responsibility for his education three years ago, she will take her role seriously and see to it that he learns the necessary material. Although Lloyd dislikes Silpha's extreme diligence, he knows that she won't allow him to miss practice until he makes progress. She commands him to resume his posture, and the two cross swords once more. However, Lloyd is able to precisely mimic Silpha's movements this time. She can tell that he has improved, so she is impressed by how much. But Lloyd thinks to himself that he is really using something called control type magic to mimic her movements precisely. Stated differently, he is lying on his swordsmanship test. Her body is only that of an eight-year-old. So even with him mimicking her moves, she is still stronger, taller, and more mobile than he is. He realizes that the discrepancies put him at a significant disadvantage and that he must find a means to make up for them. He devises an ingenious solution. He intends to continue his cheating he uses three spales to level the playing field against Sulfa, one to make his wooden blade grow longer, another to make him stronger physically, and a third to make him levitate. He eventually sees an opening, so he changes up his strategy and stops, imitating her moves in the middle of his strikes, catching her off surprise and setting himself up to attack. She was still able to stop his swordsman, though, because she is still a very talented swordswoman. When she confronts him about his recent adultery, Lloyd fears that he was discovered. She surmises that he had to have done it to compensate for their disparate skill levels. To be honest, she finds it quite impressive. That implies that he was performing dispels simultaneously, which is an extremely sophisticated skill since even the mages of the palace court find it challenging to do. Lloyd chooses to ignore the fact that he was really employing four distinct spells at once rather than just two, but he is merely relieved that she didn't chastise him for utilizing magic. Lloyd has to take a bath later that evening, but regretfully or luckily, depending on your perspective, he is made to take his bath in the maid's bathroom. While perched on Sylpha's lap, he finds everything about his predicament extremely embarrassing. 
but Sulfa won't allow him to go take a shower on his own since the last time she did that. He was able to take a shower and read all day. My guy just wants to read some books, but he can't accomplish anything because he's surrounded by so many opai. He is warned by one of the other maids that the demon of the Forbidden's library will take him if he misbehaves. The girls tell the entire narrative because Loiting had never heard of this Forbidden's library or the creature inside. A long time ago, after the sacrifice of innumerable magicians, they succeeded in confining the demon inside a book, saving the kingdom of Saloon from total destruction. This demon's name was Grimmer, and the Forbidden's library of the castle is where he is purportedly imprisoned. Silpha doesn't think the story is real, and is certain that anything as ridiculous as that wouldn't frighten Lloyd. But Lloyd can't force himself to look them in the eye since he's fighting his own demons from being surrounded by so many girls in the bath. They misinterpret this and assume he must be genuinely afraid of their tale. So they begin by offering for him to spend the night in their beds if he so chooses. He can't just stop exploring the Forbidden's library now that he knows about it. Even though they fight about who gets to stay with him, Lloyd stealthily navigates the castle's hallways that evening in search of the passageway that ought to lead to the Forbidden's library. Then he feels the need to hide his existence by casting an air spell on himself. He becomes nearly invisible as a result of the air, surrounding him changing in density and light, refracting off of it. While one of the guards is drifting off to sleep, the other warns him to stay alert, because they are supposed to be watching over magic that, in the wrong hands, might destroy the kingdom and a sealed demon. While they are talking about how excellent they are at their watch duty, Lord is strolling by. After this, they're definitely going to lose their jobs, don't they? However, there was still another line of defense in place to prevent anybody from entering the library. This seal was created by 10 extremely strong mages, using their most potent magical seal, so there should be no way for anyone to get past it. In any case, he breezed through it, so I suppose the magicians are getting fired too. Ever inside the library, Lloyd is shocked to discover that in all the years he has lived here, he has never ever seen this location. He begins perusing the many fascinating books that are accessible, but he constantly reminds himself that he needs to repair that barrier to prevent employment losses caused by him. He is pleased that a young child was able to break the seal on the library entrance, so he tries to get Grimoire to unseal him as well. At that moment, he sees a book fly out of a pile. But, even if he doesn't, Grimoire's seal will most likely break on its own because it has deteriorated over time. Grimoire offers Lloyd some gold nuggets as a bribe, but Lloyd isn't duped by his claims. The creation magic used to make this gold is combined with Grimoire's extremely subpar manufacturing. He also informs Grimoire that after he leaves this place, he will remake that seal. He can read a great deal of books in the kingdom. Therefore, he couldn't let something like Grimoire possibly ruin everything. Lloyd isn't buying it when Grimoire tries to persuade him that he won't ruin the kingdom. In a final effort, he promises to teach Lloyd some old magic in exchange for his release. Lloyd is eager to learn more magic and is willing to put the entire kingdom under the bus to achieve this goal. When he inquires about if Grimoire will actually teach him any old magic, Grimoire responds that he most certainly will, sensing he had the child's attention. In an attempt to win him over, he also says that he must be extremely skilled in wizardry. This triggers some unpleasant memories of Lloyd's previous life in which he was rejected due to his lack of magical ability. However, since he now possesses a royal family member's body that has changed, when he is free, he finds it hard to believe Lloyd truly broke the seal in such a manner. He makes a magic key and uses it to destroy the book that was containing Grimoire. Lloyd requests that the lesson start, because he is still very eager to learn about old magic from Grimoire. After glancing at him, Grimoire throws a ball of purple fire at him and declares that this is lesson one. He is preparing to leave here and either goddamn destroy the planet or something else because he thinks it must have murdered Lloyd. But Lloyd emerges from the smoke entirely unscathed. After suffering a direct hit from his spell, Grimoire finds it hard to believe Lloyd is still alive. And Lloyd is complimenting it on how special it is. Grimoire can't believe Lloyd survived and begins to cast a lot more spells at him since he would love to see some more. Grimoire is perplexed as to how Lloyd's barrier could be so strong. Though, as not a single person is able to penetrate it. Lloyd is analyzing the magic while watching in awe, but he's more interested in feeling what it feels like to be attacked by his own body than in risking death. Lloyd lets a gap in the wall open, and, much to Grimoire's surprise, takes a little of the purple fire in. Even though it severely burns his finger, he looks to be enjoying it. 
And this is when we realize that Lloyd is severely mentally unstable, not wanting to lose to a youngster. Grumware pulls out his trump card and grows his second spell so he can dual cast his magic when he is told to show him anything else. Furthermore, Grumware is facing worse matches than Jobo did. Despite the fact that this would have destroyed anyone who wasn't the protagonist, Grumware notices that Lloyd has removed his strongest spell with ease. He understands that he is not strong enough to combat this child. Therefore, he makes an immediate attempt to flee from him. But as he was ready to drive away, he struck the barricade Lloyd had erected in advance of them. He didn't want the library to know he was down here. Because the castle is directly above it, Lloyd tells Grumware that he didn't think he was going to try to flee. Because of an old error he committed that increased life insurance premiums for everyone. He prefers to use extra caution when utilizing magic. Additionally, he erected fences around each book to prevent them from burning. However, Lloyd interrupts Grumware as he is about to attempt another magic ritual, telling him that he has had enough of that one. He now utilizes one of his own attack spells to see what kind of protective magic Grumware can deploy. It's reasonable to say that Grumware won't be enjoying this because we see him lying on the ground, looking like a vanquished demon following the explosion. When Lloyd approaches him, he wonders why he didn't defend himself with a barrier, but Grumwar was helpless to stop the attack. After that, Lloyd does some magic to make the room normal again, and Grimoire has become much more subdued as a result of his interactions with Lloyd. Although he claims to be a wonderful wizard, Lloyd believes that he is the truly amazing one because it turns out that magic cannot kill demonstrations, despite the fact that it hurts a lot. Since Grimoire is said to be immune to magical injury, Lloyd is curious as to how much suffering he can inflict. Grimoire refuses to accept that punishment and promises to be loyal to Lloyd for as long as he doesn't torment him. Although torturing won't stop, Lloyd accepts to take him on as a familiar, but not by much. He gives Grimoire the order to change into a chibu-looking goat in order to stop frightening people with his appearance. He then intends to woo Grimoire into giving him control over his body. Grim attempts to do so, nevertheless, and just finishes up staring into the abyss of his Lloyd's mana reserves. This demonstrated to him that he would be better off just being obedient and not getting into any trouble because whatever he attempts to do against this child will succeed. After settling everything, Lloyd leaves to enjoy reading in the Forbidden's library as much as he loves. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please do subscribe to the channel and click on the screen for more contents like this. See you over there, Aragachuo.